Organic brain disorders, which are also abbreviated as organic brain syndrome or organic mental disorders. Now, this is basically uh, a group of disorders which is characterized by a decreased mental function, uh, which is caused due to some medical or physical uh, generosity. So basically, uh, the cause is of a medical or a physical origin, and it's not of any psychiatric origin. So that is basically the group of diseases which we are discussing right over over here. Uh, now what basically happens over here is there is a range of diseases which can correlate to this organic mental disorders or organic brain disorders. We'll have to classify them depending upon their severity which can range from milder forms to moderate forms and even uh, the severe forms which can hinder the day-to-day -day life activities of the person. So when the patient basically walks into your clinic and he uh, or she gives you a history of a decreased mental function, which can be the loss of memory, the loss of incoordination, uh, the loss of uh, the uh, continuous speech, or even any activity which is hindering uh, his day-to-day -day life activities, it can be regarded as an organic mental disorder. Now, it's very important to rule out uh, any physical or any um, uh, chemical causes behind these organic brain disorders before you label the person uh, suffering from any psychiatric illness, for example, anxieties, phobias, uh, mood disorders, or it can be even the bipolar affective disorders or even the schizophrenias. Um, basically, the symptoms are quite similar and the differentiation is again very important. The differential diagnosis is again very important. Uh, even hypoglycemias and sepsis, the patient basically acts in manners which are quite similar uh, to a psychotic episode. So it's again very important to get those investigations done, to get those uh, brain imagings done and get those lab investigations done just to rule out any organic cause um, which can also result in the same symptomatology. So over here, basically, in this section, we'll be discussing the organic conditions and then the psychiatric presentations of these organic conditions. So basically, it's a correlation. Even the psychiatric conditions can present as some bodily dysfunctions, for example, some physical symptoms due to some psychiatric illness. And then it can be the other way around. That is, the organic conditions can manifest themselves as some psychiatric presentations. So basically, it's always uh, safer to rule out uh, at the both ends. Um, it can be of the organic origin and it can be of the psychiatric origin as well. So the classification, again, is very important. It can depend upon the severity of the disease and it can even depend upon the causative factors or the risk factors that are basically resulting in that type of a, um, a dysfunction, psychiatric dysfunction. So over here, we'll be discussing or we'll be summarizing uh, the different kind of uh, clinical presentations which are basically of an organic origin in that particular person. Now, how do you basically uh, go about to define these organic disorders is again very important. Disorders that have an underlying physical or pathological cause. So it's again very important to highlight these factors that it can be of a physical origin as well as it can be of a pathological cause. Uh, so all of these biochemical tests, all of these lab investigations that can be performed in that particular person just to rule out any organic disorder that can be the underlying pathology of that psychiatric representation is again very important over here. The functional disorders, so organic disorders, can also be renamed as the functional disorders. They can present as dementias, that is the loss of memories, and they can also present as delirium, which is quite common. Now, how do you basically define delirium? It's basically an extreme state of confusion in which the patient presents with restlessness and even unconsciousness, incoherence. So all of these factors are quite, um, quite important while we're discussing the delirium as as well as the a uh, lot of cases with dementia as well which can be of the organic origin as well now in this table basically we are summarizing the organic causes on one hand and we're also discussing uh, the psychiatric symptoms of these organic causes on the other hand. And then we'll be giving the slight details according to these psychiatric symptoms over here. 
When we are dealing with a patient of stroke, first of all, these patients of stroke can present with depression, they can present with emotional lability, personality changes, behavioral problems, and even dementias. So basically, as you look at the picture, it can be of a psychiatric origin, but when the investigations are done, that they reveal that basically the patient is suffering from stroke. So the further details would include that it's basically of a high incidence of depression in the first year and atypical presentation is there in these patients and basically it affects the rehabilitation of the patient as well. So uh, stroke is one of the um, higher incidence causes over here and then cerebral tumors is one of the other leading cause over here. Uh, the local effects may depend upon the site of lesion, for example, the occipital, and may give rise to the visual hallucinations, the frontal uh, to behavioral changes, and hypomania and depression as well. So also the adjustment disorders and the depression linked to diagnosis is again very important over here when we are discussing the cerebral tumors to be the cause of any psychiatric representation. Epilepsy is another cause which is quite common and it's again going to present as auras. The patient is going to give you the history of auras along with it. He's going to give you a history of hallucinations and other disorders of perceptions as well. For example, psychosis and um, neuro neurotic disorders as well uh, will be seen in such patients. Then the complex partial seizures of temporal lobe epilepsy, schizophrenia, like psychosis, and increased risk of suicide. So all of these characteristics are quite common in patients with epilepsy. Patients with head injury would usually represent or will usually basically give you a history of amnesia. Then we can see the behavioral disturbances in such patients along with the cognitive impairment. So patient will have the difficulty in the thinking process, in the thought form and in the thought content as well. And then the outcome is dependent on the extent of the trauma to the um, head and the loss of consciousness and the length of the post-traumatic anterior grade and the retrograde amnesia. So basically anterior grade is amnesia. What happens is the patient loses the ability to memorize things and in retrograde amnesia, he is basically having the difficulty to recall things from his past. So these are basically the two kinds of amnesia that we see in people with head injuries specifically. So porphyrias can also represent as emotional disturbances and liabilities, delirium again, which was an extreme confusional state that we talked about, and then depression, panic or anxiety episodes, and psychotic episodes can also be administered in such people with, who are suffering with porphyrias. It's basically of an acute intermittent type of a disease. So the disease is going to be acute and it's going to be intermittent. It's not going to be a continuous process in such people. Hypercalcemia is another um, condition in which basically the, pre, uh, the person will present as suffering from depression, he's going to be fatigued, and low energy, irritability, and cognitive slowing. So it's again one of the causes of uh, the psychiatric presentation of the organic disorders as well over here. Then we have another uh, metabolic condition which is known as uremia or the renal failure or the hepatolenticular degeneration which is also known as the Wilson's disease. So it's basically a syndrome which is characterized by all of these characteristics. Now how is the patient going to present? Uh, basically, he's going to be uh, in a state of depression. Then memory problems are going to be faced by such people. The person will give you a history of delirium. In almost 33% of patients, uh, such a case of delirium is noted down. And then he may give you a history of psychosis and presents with hepatic or movement disorders as well. And then uh, psychiatric symptoms, including dementia, will be seen in such people. Inherited autosomal recessive disorder, basically, and um, it's because of the copper metabolism. So something is basically hindering the copper metabolism and this is what is the underlying pathology in the Wilson's disease and it's again going to present as a psychiatric condition. So it's very important when the lab investigations are carried out in such people, they're going to reveal that the person is suffering from Wilson's disease and he's not suffering from any uh, psychiatric ailment instead. 
Now, Cushing's disease, as we can see, this is basically an endocrine group of diseases. What basically happens is in Cushing's disease, uh, we're going to observe the weight gain, the depression, psychosis, insomnia, and loss of libido or loss of sex drive as well. Then Addison's disease, uh, the patient is, will be suffering from depression, tiredness, weight loss, anorexia, and the mild cognitive impairment as well. Then people with hypothyroidism, it's again one of of the um, endocrine uh, abnormalities, the people will be suffering from depression, mania, schizophrenia, like psychosis, cognitive slowing, uh, dementia, ataxia, anorexia, weight gain. There'll be a depressed mood and psychotic symptoms, loss of libido, loss of sex drive, and poor memory will be observed in such people. So uh, this, all of this syndrome is basically characterized as myxedema madness. So this is uh, the terminology which is used for such a syndrome. Then hyperthyroidism is basically characterized by weight loss, first of all, and increased appetite, anxiety, psychosis, um, irritability, loss of libido, restlessness, and then weakness. Um, in hypokalemia, the patient will give you a history of depression and sleep disturbances as well. Then we have hyperparathyroidism, in which uh, the person, the patient will be having delirium, agitation, anxiety, depression, cognitive impairment, along with irritability, emotional liability, and psychosis along with it. In hyperparathyroidism, the patient will be having depression, he'll be fatigued, low energy, irritability, cognitive slowing, along with dementia with it. In pheochromocytomas, the patient will have anxiety and panic attacks along with it. Basically, this illness will be episodic and it will be associated with hypertension along with this uh, pheochromocytoma along with these anxiety and panic attacks as well. So CJDs is again one of the um, infectious diseases in which it's quite rare. It's rapidly progressive psychiatric and neurological symptoms are suggestive of the CJD. Uh, severe dementia, pyramidal and extrapyramidal neurological disease. So it is characterized by EEGs. EEGs are very important over here. There's a diffuse, slowing and characteristic triphasic pattern which is seen in the uh, EEGs. It's going to be a periodic sharp wave complexes which are quite characteristic in uh, such a disease. Now in HIV we have psychomotor slowing, memory impairments and reduced concentrations are seen in such people. With subcortical picture there is going to be an apathy, social withdrawal is seen in uh, such people, there is a, going to be irritability and emotional liability is very common in people who are suffering from HIV. Along with it uh, there is going to be an insight which is maintained initially. So he's going to know Know that all of these feelings that he's having it's because of the HIV that he's suffering from. Now due to the uh, direct neurotoxic effects there is going to be a widespread inflammatory changes and neuronal loss which is linked with the AIDS. Now syphilis is again going to present in a variety of ways which are also of the psychiatric origin and then we have the viral encephalitis in which the person will have the altered consciousness, confusion, seizures, dysphasias and there's also going to be the movement disorder seen in such people along with the sensory changes, abnormal behavior, hallucinations, and nightmares observed in such people. There are going to be the various infectious agents, that is the tick-borne virus, measles, mumps, rubella, also abbreviated as MMR, and rabies. Um, herpes simplex is also one of the causative agents over here. Now, the classification of the mental disorders would uh, consist of delirium. As we have already discussed, uh, it's going to be a state of confusion. Uh, the patient will be restless and he will be uh, even in a state of uh, restrained consciousness. Then uh, dementia is one of, the, um, uh, one of the presentation in which the person basically suffers from loss of memory. Then personality disorders can be one of the presentation in such organic disorders. Then we have the amnestic syndrome in which the person will have amnesia as well. Uh, then the other mental disorders that the person can suffer from is the hallucinosis. Um, the hallucinations can vary from auditory, from tactile, from visual hallucinations. Uh, then there can be the catatonic disorders as well. So the delusional disorder in which the person has a firm belief. Uh, it can be the delusions of grandiosity, of uh, delusions of paranoia. So all of these firm thoughts are going to be seen uh, in 
such people even of the uh, who are suffering from psychiatric disturbances of the organic origin so then we have the anxiety disorders which can range from panics phobias and all of these um, symptoms of anxiety are going to be seen in such patients as well dissociative disorder basically the patient uh, cuts off from reality and that is basically known as dissociation in such people then the person basically can have the emotional uh, liable disorders on the other hand so he can be emotionally unstable or he can be emotionally liable at the other end so the mild cognitive disorder, the thinking process and the thought form will also be affected. So in this section, basically, we summarize the organic brain syndrome or the organic mental disorder. So that is the end of this section. Thank you for watching Scaria.com.